Yeah. Question two. Uh, Sean measures uh, measured the mass in kilograms of each of nine filled bags. He then used an algorithm to sort the masses into increasing order. Sean's list after the first pass through the sorting algorithm is given below. Explain how you know that Sean did not use bubble sort. A slightly unusual start to the question, isn't it? Because we've not seen the original list. We're told that this is the list at the end of one complete pass. We've only got two algorithms that we're supposed to know about, the, the uh, shuffle sort and the bubble sort. And one of them has a particular standout feature that happens in the first pass. Remember, shuffle sort first pass compares the first and second numbers and swaps them if necessary. End of the first pass. Bubble sorts first pass goes through the whole list and bubbles one number to its correct position. <coughs> so at the end of the first pass with bubble sort, the last number in the list is in the right place. Whether you're sorting increasing or decreasing, that's what will happen. We're, support, uh, we're sorting them into increasing order, so that number, if it was bubble sort, that number would be the biggest number in the list. It isn't. That's what tells us that we're not using bubble sort. It's that uh, the largest number isn't at the end of the list. So that's our answer to part one. Largest value isn't at the end <coughs> of the list. Um, they were looking for the largest value being at the right hand end of the list. That's what they wanted. Um, part two. In fact, Sean used the shuttle sort. Yes, of course, did start at the left hand end of the list. Write down the two possibilities for the original list. So, again, we're thinking what did the first pass of the shuttle sort do? First pass of shuttle sort looks at the first and second items and swaps them if necessary. And that's the end of the pass. So, there's only two things that could have happened. It could have looked at this list and swapped those two numbers. Or it could have looked at this list and those two numbers could have already been in the right places in which case it didn't need to swap them. So the only two possible options, I'm going to be paid for this, are we could have had them already in that position. And it did say write down the full list, didn't it? So I'm going to write down the full list. Or the only other possibility is that those two could have been swapped in that first pass. So it could have looked like that before the first pass. The rest of the numbers are unchanged, but the first two numbers could have been either way around. That's, that's it for your one mark again for that bit. Right, part three said, uh, write down the list after the second pass through the shuffle sort algorithm. So just for reference, the list looks like the top line here. So the second pass through the list would look at 41 and 22 and swap them if necessary. They would swap. Then it would look at 22 and 32 and swap them if necessary. They would. So that's 22. So the rest of the numbers remain unchanged. So after the second pass, that's what the list looks like. There it is. Um, they actually, because we're not really looking at those numbers, they gave you the mark just for those first three, even if you didn't write down the rest of them. Um, part four, how many passes <coughs> of shuffle sort were needed to sort the entire list? Remember, the feature about the shuffle sort is it doesn't end early. <coughs> the first pass looks at the first and second numbers, second pass, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth pass looks at those two numbers. It then shuffles everything back into the right place beyond that. But if you've got nine numbers, you need eight passes. Simple as that with the shuffle sort. Bubble sort could finish early. But eight is the answer for the number of passes needed. Um, Sean's sorted list is given below. So we now, for part five, have, have the list in order. So here it is. Uh, is, that, is that right? Oh yeah, I have. Before I write this out, I'll read the question. That's a good idea. Um, it says, he wants to pack the, the bags into bins, each of which can hold a maximum of 100 kilograms. Write down the list in decreasing order. 
and then apply the first fit decreasing method. So they, they're not going to give you a mark for writing the list in decreasing order, but the instruction is that you have to write down the list in, in decreasing order. So, so we should. Have I got the list? There it is. 53, 43, 41, 37, 32. Is that the nine? Yeah. Um, and then uh, you were given the bins to put it into. We're told it's 100 kilograms in each bin. So you were given four bins to work with. Um, and this is, there's no flexibility in this. This is a strict algorithm. You take the numbers in the order that they appear and put them in the first available space. So we'll, we have to do that. 53 has to go into bin 1. 43 will fit because we've got a total of 100. So 43 has to go into bin 1 as well. That takes us to 96 there, doesn't it? I'm just going to make a little note of that to remind me. Uh, 41 has to go into bin 2. Uh, 37 fits in there as well. Now that is, what's that, 78 we've got there at the moment. So when we come to the 32, that won't fit. That has to go into bin 3. Uh, 29 has to go into bin 3 as well. What we're on there, that's now, that's 61, isn't it, that we're in there. 26, now 26 doesn't fit in bin 2, because we've only got 22 space in there, but it does fit in that bin, so 26 will go into that one, so that now becomes 87. 22 does exactly fit on top of that 78, so that one has to go there, which makes that 100, and our 15, the final one, doesn't fit in any of the early ones, it has to go, there. only just doesn't fit in the 87, doesn't it? It has to go into bin 4. Um, it's dead easy to mark because there is no alternative answer to that. <coughs> There's no element of you making your own choices about anything in there. That's the only acceptable way of doing it. And it's just a matter of keeping on top of the adding up as you go along. Part 6 said find a way to pack all of the bags using only three bins, each of which can hold a maximum of 100 kilograms. Um, okay, and you are given three bins to try and work that out. So, uh, so where were we? We just need to um, to rearrange some of these things. Actually, I I thought that one that was already 100, so that one is, is kind of perfect, isn't it? So we'll do that to start with. Then what? Can we rearrange a little bit? Um, I, can't, I can't remember. It's dull having to do this, isn't it? Uh, we have. Um, what can we put together? We can't put the 53 and 43 together, can we? Because otherwise that, that takes us too close to the limit for that. So we'll separate those out. Um, what we've got a remaining 47 there, and 32 and 15 is 47. So does the 29 and 26 fit? It would do, wouldn't it? That would just be enough um, to fit into that one. And so that's that's it. It doesn't matter which order you write your bins down. But I think that's the only combination that works. Isn't it? And there we go, that was two marks for doing that. Nine marks in total, it's quite a lot, they're done in the paper, isn't it? There we go, thanks, Reese.